Episode 2 Enter the Underworld You know, I wear a lot of hats as a private eye. Quite literally at times. It can be fun, but nothing brings me greater pleasure than playing the part of a femme fatale for a night out. Especially when I've got this lustrous black dress to show off a shiny new persona. I decided to top off my ensemble with a white fur boa wrapped around my shoulders. Sabika Price is looking as dark and dangerous as the underworld itself. I couldn't be more ready. The knock at the door came just moments before I had thoroughly examined and approved my new look. I'll admit the arrival of Naya's butler sure did start to me a little. I'll also concede that at least some of my evening's confidence will have to be fabricated, but I'm good at that. The phrase, fake it till you make it, comes to mind. Time to meet my two-way ticket to the underworld. Right on time, I see. Good evening, madam. I am Leshmold. I was instructed to pick up a certain lady at this address. What is your name? Fatima Sabik, of course. A friend of Nye. Hmm, I see. I'm begging your pardon, madam. I seem to have approached the wrong door. I'm looking for a woman with uh, another name. Oh, right, of course. I must have been distracted after hearing about an entirely different, but no less alluring lady. You may call me Sabeka Price. You catch on quickly, Miss Price. It appears I'm to be your escort for the evening. Allow me to take you to our chauffeur. We can continue our conversations in the comfort of our convoyance. Lead the way, Lechenault. Nice butler offered me his arm, and we walked to the limousine waiting for us outside. My escort had a bit of grey hair, and his stern, tan complexion showed evidence of decades of secrets locked behind a stiff upper lip. Thankfully, his black suit, Bow tie and top hat didn't at all clash with my outfit. Nye was right, he was a bit older, and certainly more formal in manner than I might have chosen for myself, but a girl could do much worse for an evening such as this. We are ready. Sam, depart. Right away, sir. Wow, look at this fancy ride. You fellas really know how to treat a girl right. My lady did mention that you might be pleased with the accommodations. Indeed. Is this how you people live all the time? That brings us to the vital topic at hand, Miss Price. We need to take this time to discuss your role for tonight. My role? It will take more than a different name and a fancy deportment to keep your true identity safe. Do you have a story for your chosen alias? You will be in contact with many dangerous people, you know. Certainly. I'm a friend and informant of Nye. Hmm. I'm afraid you'll need something more substantial, Miss Price. Not to worry, my lady has ordered me to do my very best to ensure you are adequately prepared for an evening in the underworld. If you'll allow me, I'd like to provide an alternate background for your consideration. Aren't we concerned that the driver Sam might hear us? You are good to be cautious, but I can assure you Samuel is under my charge and Queen Nye's employ. You may trust him as much as you seem to trust me. Excellent. Let's hear what you've got then. Miss Price, you are employed as a secretary in the local police force. Someone who has access to information regarding law enforcement movements and reports in Valhalla. I suppose I do see enough of the officers in real life to make that part convincing. In addition, you are connected with Queen Nye and that she has hired you to share information with her. And by extension with the Zactarian Empire. You don't mean to suggest that I was bribed? Among the syndicates, you'll find that information and results are valued far higher than the means employed to provide them. Okay, fair enough. 
That does make me wonder how many double agents you guys might actually have that none of us are aware of. You understand, of course, that we are not at liberty to discuss that matter further, Miss Price. I'm told my lady is doing you a tremendous favor by allowing you to make use of her invitation. And I couldn't be more grateful for several reasons. Upon entering the manor, you will be introduced and announced as my lady's associate from within the police force. I trust this role won't be too much of a concern for you. Oh, a formal announcement upon arrival? They don't mess with these things. I might have a problem, though, with people possibly asking me directly for police secrets. That is highly unlikely. Once people understand who you report to, they will know the appropriate channels they must use to get the information they need. If they have the proper connections. Which reminds me, you will need this. What is this ugly thing? By order of Lord Vrax, any member of the Zactarian Empire is to don one of these pins as a form of solidarity when they attend a public event in the underworld. Looks to me like a form of branding. I suppose, depending on the meaning you intended. I really don't want to have to wear this. The red and gold draws too much attention and just doesn't work with my skin tone. Uh, Lord Vrax has insisted on this policy, so I must enforce it. Otherwise, I can order Sam to turn around. Oh, fine, I'll pin it on. It's almost like he's afraid that other groups would steal his people or something. I can see why you get that impression. Sounds like there are some intriguing politics going on here. It can certainly seem that way, but the underworld's basic hierarchy is clear. There hasn't been a noticeable disruption of power in decades. Therefore, everyone is either satisfied with their position in the syndicates, or they simply cannot or would not rock the boat, as it were. Perhaps you could explain to me who's who before we arrive? I hope you'll forgive me, Miss Price, but I must refrain from sharing specific details like that. Information is power, but power is dangerous. We're both low enough on the syndicate ladders to be able to benefit more from ignorance than from knowledge. I'm still here for my actual job, you know. I understand, Miss Price. But I must insist upon my reticence. You will have plenty of time to observe the dynamics of power for yourself as soon as we arrive at Volkov Manor. Fine. I knew you would understand. Doesn't mean I have to like it. No, certainly not. Shall I start approaching the matter now, sir? Only if the lady has no further questions. Oh, just one more, actually. Do I need to stand with you the whole time? If possible, I like to be able to look and chat around on my own. If you wish, I would be willing to allow that. I can certainly find ways to keep myself busy. However, I'm sure my lady has already cautioned you about the dangers of any amount of attachments or connections here. Yes, yes, I'm a smart girl. I know better than to become entangled in the dealings of the underworld. Just let me have my fun. As you like, Miss Price. As soon as you wish to go home, you will find me lingering near the doors that lead to the valet. I will point those doors out to you once we enter the main foyer, at which point I will leave you be. Sounds perfect. Go in, have the time of my life, and find what I'm looking for. Get out, nice and easy. Pull into the manor at your convenience, Sam. Right away. This is it then, Sabaka's big break into the high society of the low lives in the city and her big and only break. To find out where the Scythe of Horus is located and be the best ephemeral coquette I can be, I was going to make sure that I went in with elegant panache. And that the Scythe, or at least a vital clue to its whereabouts, would be heading out the door with me right under the noses of Valhalla's most wanted. All right. Here we are. Thank you, Sam. My pleasure. Enjoy yourself. I plan to. Volkov Manor was such a sight. Looking at it, you'd think that a nobleman from Transylvania had established himself in Long Island, New York. It has all the imposing austerity of the Gothic aesthetic, melded with the exhilarating vitality of modern times. 
he took my breath away in both awe and excitement. I think it was excitement more than anything, because despite the fact that I was going to be surrounded by organized criminals, I was positively giddy as Lechonaut and I approached the set of doors. I tell people I'm not a silly little girl, but sometimes I wonder and laugh at myself for it. It seemed odd at first that anyone, including Lechonaut and I, were going inside the manor through some side doors, but the reason became quickly apparent. We ended up at the top of the grand staircase in the foyer, waiting for a line of people to be announced upon their descent. Boss Sidra of the Corsairs, escorted by her bodyguard, Taros! The foyer was magnificent! The grand staircase descended into the churning sea of black coats, white shirts, and the bright, glittery colors of various dresses. Overlooking the entire scene, even above our vantage point atop the staircase, were a dozen or so ledges near the ceiling where the grotesque stone gargoyles leered over the otherwise brilliant environment. Almost felt like they were watching Legend Out and myself. I could hear music coming from what seemed to be a large ballroom next to a foyer. I certainly know where I was going once I was free from Legend Outside. Hattori and Jiro of the Yakuza! This time I paid more attention to the people walking down the stairs. I saw the back of a large minotaur in a tux, followed by a pair of slender figures. The woman's skin looked especially pale, with her bare arm emerging from the deep red dress wrapped around the arm of her escort's dark suit. Not sure I've heard of them, I'll have to remember to look them up later. Ragnar of the Fangwilds! Quite a diverse crowd here! The announcer just proclaimed the arrival of a humanoid dragon named Ragnir Malakar Rex, whom I had heard of before. His red reptilian frame was hard to miss, even from behind. I know he's responsible for a number of livestock deaths in recent months, but who knows what else he's involved in being a part of this crowd. Oh, the cat? Alright. The cat Dander, escorted by Azoth of the Zactarian Empire. Proof that even the most intimidating criminals have a heart, to a point. Azoth is a recurring skeletal villain in Valhalla, and who knows where else? He is known to disappear for long periods of time, and it seems like no one knows exactly where he departs or returns. The cat, Dander, seems to really like him. But surely it deserves better than Azoth, right? Miss Price, we are about to be announced. You would do well to look a little less dazed when we descend the steps. I followed Lechonaut's advice as he handed the announcer a card from his pocket. I guess it had our names and titles on it. Sabika Price, constabulary correspondent for the Zactarian Empire, escorted by Lechonaut, butler to Queen Nye of the Zactarian Empire. For being such lowly grunts in this great gang of faces, we seem to have more lengthy titles. Then again, I suppose the higher-ups don't need so much introduction among their own people. The door over there in that corner, that's where you'll find me, when you wish to depart. Once we reach the main floor, you are free to mingle and observe at your leisure. Thank you. Really. Okay, last, I'm here. Now, let's see if you're here, Lord Rax. Ugh, this would be the one time I give that the speaker the despot the respect he wants. late, but it seems the party had only just begun, which meant I had plenty of time to have a little fun when I got used to the place. Besides, I needed to do something to calm my nerves, it all felt surreal to me. I missed the exciting racket and fancy clothes. My mind couldn't stop dwelling on the fact that I was in a completely different world, one with a surface so polished I could almost see myself fitting in among them. If that glitzy sheen weren't only skin deep, for the first time, I felt much like a sheep in wolf's clothing, and I didn't know whether to be frightened or thrilled. I grabbed a drink from a pointy-eared servant as I made my way to the ballroom. I'm a bit of a sucker for a good dance, and the music kept drawing me in. I didn't think it was possible for the impressive foyer to be upstaged by anything else in this place had to offer, but I was proven wrong. 
The boardroom had to be the grandest space in the entire manor. My eyes were first drawn to the profound amount of gold leaf. This provided extravagant frames for the massive frescoes, which depicted numerous cherubs and imps in the middle of some sort of eerie ballet. Or was it a wild chasing game? If so, who was chasing who? Along the walls, immense mirrors were placed between a few giant portraits of what I assumed to be the ancestors of the manor's owner. There was a regal beauty to every depicted lord and lady, even if there was something off about each one. The occasional horns and sharp teeth were quite obvious, but in other cases, the difference was almost imperceptibly subtle. There weren't as many people in the ballroom as I expected, and even fewer were actually dancing. I guess the evening was still quite young. The temperatures in the room were short to pick up as the night went on. Besides, the smaller crowd gave me a chance to admire the marble floor for a moment. It was so smooth and polished that I could clearly see the fold of every dress and the glint of every cufflink in the floor's reflection, almost as if the underworld itself was barely concealing a more sinister dimension beneath it. Joining in the dance sounded delightful, but I didn't yet have a proper dance partner. Besides, it would be best to stand to the side and listen a while before I really put myself out there. I wasn't about to let the drinks get to my head just yet. The small bits I heard in that first little while were further proof that I entered a foreign domain. I don't care what Gramps says. I'd much rather be out stealing beards than being stuck with this tiresome tripe. Even my great uncle Vladimir would agree with me. That's him up there. He never did forget the artist who failed to include his cloak. Grandpa has really outdone themselves this time. I quite agree. It took some convincing since I didn't think it was really my style, but I'm very pleased with the results. They certainly know how to compliment your dreads, girl. I'll have to let Val know. Oh, there she is over there with her shiny new bodyguard. As for you, Zol, I have to say you clean up pretty good. Oh, shut up. Aw, always the sweetheart. If you'll excuse me, oh, Val. I can assure you, my good friend, it is perfectly secure. You say that as if I have any good reason to trust you. And yet. Don't you be snide with me, vampire! This party will go seamless as per my vision, and you best not do anything you regret! Then we are quite fortunate that current circumstances can prevent this exchange from escalating. Master Sophomore and I will personally! Please, please, not here. That old law can be such a chore, I swear. Surely there's a provision for good behavior. Where is Bush? You don't quite follow it, do ya? I'm getting there, Octavius. I'm doing the best I can with Dander here. Might need a few more feline friends, if that's the case. Perhaps you could approach Azuri and I'll... I... I'd rather not. My last discussion with her didn't go too well, I'm afraid. Ha! Of course not! You've got no gut says off! I really wish I could refute that. Indeed, frighteningly fascinating! I was so enthralled I must have taken a few habitual sips from an empty glass before I realized I already finished my drink. With a disappointed sigh, I left my post as an eavesdropping wallflower to find further refreshment. I knew the evening had just begun, but after listening to some of these conversations, I was starting to feel like I wanted out of this den of wolves. The fact there seemed to be literal wolves here didn't help my nerves at all. Still, I thought I played it pretty cool when I walked across the room in search of a wandering servant with a tray. To my relief, I found one. I casually set my empty glass down and reached for the last available drink, but the white gloved hand got to it first. Oh, we are deeply sorry, madame. The fast handed gentleman highlighted his dark suit with a white vest and a sky blue necktie loosely tied around his collar. That same blue was wrapped around his dark fedora, which was further adorned by a matching blue rose pin to the brim. His defining feature, however, was the fact that he concealed his face behind a smiling golden mask. In any other setting, I might find this rather unsettling, but somehow gave him an air of genuine jovial charm. Oh, oh no, sir, it's okay. I'll, I'll just find another. A fine lady like thee should suffer no inconvenience. We promised this glass to an associate of ours, but... Please allow us to make the same promise to thee. That... that's kind of you, sir. Thank you. May we beg thy leave while we reluctantly fulfill a brief obligation, and then take great pleasure in providing thee a refreshment that is more befitting of thy elegance? I suppose I can allow it this once. If I can coax out the name of my golden mask guardian. Ah, but how could we spurn such a bewitching, 
charming damsel, excuse us if it please thee, dear lady, but prior to a fleeting absence will tell thee this. Here we are called Orion. <laughs> That concludes the second episode of Brawlhalla Underworld, a fan-made serial audio drama produced and directed by Baron Dipinus, inspired by the video game Brawlhalla by Blue Mammoth Games, as well as original setting and character concepts by Akiko Sama, which are being used for this project with Akiko's consent. This episode starred Mirage BHH as Agent Mirage, Sergeant Salty as Lechenult the Butler, Pat Hyena as Sam the Limo Driver, Darth Mimi as the Announcer of Names, Schwerpy as Caspian, and Anonymous Pi as Sidra, Saturn as Jala, Darth Mimi as Zul, Tilty as Volkov, Insanity as Hope as Lord Brax, A Knight's Gambit as Azoth, Doe as Dusk, Katanic as Mordex, and Maya as Orion. Special thanks to Captain Moneybags and Pat Hyena for assistance with writing and characterizations, to Davon971 for providing story assistance and for his role as art lead, and to Darth Mimi for assistance with audio cleanup. The artwork for this episode was a joint effort by Cizerna, Labruski, Lieutenant Lore, Maria, Pat Hyena, Kier, Saturn, Tataya Furkim, and Tolsquish. The music playing during this episode's intro was The Twilight Grove VBI Discussion, arranged by Labruski. The music playing during these credits was composed by Cat Foodinator. Be sure to check out Brawlhalla Underworld on Amino, Instagram, Reddit, and Twitter at Brawl Underworld or Brawlhalla Underworld for more information and some behind-the-scenes content, such as concept art and interviews with the cast and crew. Cast and crew social media links, as well as additional music credits, are listed in this video's description. To conclude, please enjoy this teaser for the next episode. Miss Price! <gasps> that startled me. Had I been found out? I anxiously looked around for the source of the exclamation. It came from a man who bore a strong resemblance to the ballroom portraits. Thank you very much for listening, and we'll see you next week in the Valhallen Underworld. <laughs>